The movie you're watching right now is the first movie in the tutorial series. There are six movies in this series. You're watching number one right now. I recommend that you watch these movies in order the first time through because they were done in order and it will just make a lot more sense if you watch them in order. Once you've seen them in order and you understand that, if you forget to do how to do something like uh, save, print, and email, just go to movie number six and watch it. There are also two other additional movies here that are not part of this sequence, but they will teach you how to put stone veneer on a house and create a soldier course border going around a curved driveway. So again, watch them in order, and we're going to continue on now. The first thing you want to do is open up the background image that you saved to your hard drive from your digital camera or your smartphone. To do that, you go up here to the open image icon, click on it, and then navigate to the folder where you save the pictures. Now I have my pictures saved here in this folder called demos, but you can't see them right now. The reason is my files of type is set to BMP and they are JPEG files. So you make sure that this is set to the right file format so that you can see your pictures. Now if your pictures are just text like this, it's a lot harder to tell um, what they are. So I recommend you go up here to the view menu and then click on large icons. And now you can see thumbnails of the pictures that you want. The image I want to use is this one here, so I'll double click it or click on it and click open to bring it to the screen. Now you notice that you cannot see the whole image without scrolling around. You almost always want to size your image down. It saves time, it saves uh, RAM, it makes things go faster when the image is smaller because there's really no need when you're printing it out on an inkjet printer or you're going to be sending it as an email to send a huge image and it again just slows you down so size it down to do that go here to file go to background image and go to resize size it down to between 1200 and 1500 pixels so we'll just type in 1200 here Make sure that there's a check mark here for maintain aspect ratio and you don't have to change any numbers in the height. And click OK and the image is sized down. Now that you have the image sized down, you want to save it as your before picture. To do that, go up here to File, click on Save As, give it a name. I'm going to change the file format to JPEG and I'm going to call it Hector Before and then click save and now we have this image sized down and saved we can start cleaning it up now looking at this picture you'll see there's a lot of junk in here some of it needs to be removed and some of it will just be covered up like the hose and whatever this thing here is those can be covered up with the pavers you're going to be placing in here but if I want to get rid of this ladder here I might be able to cover it up with a new shrub but then you wouldn't learn how to clone things out and remove them from the picture now would you so what you want to do is plan out what you're going to do. Using the clone tool is not necessarily going to work because of the angle of these bricks. You need something that's straight to clone things out with. And also, there's only a little bit of brick to work with here. So let's zoom in by pressing F10 on the keyboard. And I'm going to count how many rows of brick I'm going to need. One, two, three, four, five, six. At least six rows to cover this up. So if I go up here where I have six rows, we got one, two, three, four, five. We've got this black pole, whatever it is, that needs to be removed so that we can grab at least six rows of brick. So I'm going to use the clone tool to remove this black pole. So I go up here to clone, and I'm going to get a small square brush. That should be good enough. And again, for more information on how to use the clone tool, you watch that training movie, it will go into detail. I'm going to zoom in one more time. And so I'm going to right click here to set where I'm going to clone from. And then I move my mouse and line it up and use a left click to start cloning. And as you can see, it removed that pole there. Then I'm going to reverse it on this side. I'll right click here and then click there and we'll get that out there again we're going to reverse it right click
and that's probably all I need so I'm going to zoom back out by pressing F9 and now I'm going to click OK to exit the clone tool I want to grab at least six rows of those bricks so I'm going to go here to the define area tool we'll start right here and I'm going to do it right along the grout joint we'll come down here one two three four five six rows which is about here go across and up here to where I started and click OK to exit that menu and now I want to convert this to an object I simply click on it and drag it it'll ask me if I want to convert it to an object I'll say yes and I'm going to move it down here to the bottom now we're going to change the direction of these bricks like I said earlier they're not going in the right direction um, because it's not going straight across so what we'll do is we'll go up here to the warp tool and I'm going to take this handle here and bring it up so that it matches up with this grout line bring this one up here and as you can see I now have those bricks in there they look pretty good to me so I'll click OK to exit the warp tool and now I need to clone out this one last little piece so again I'll go back into the clone tool we'll zoom in and clone that guy out and we'll zoom back out and as you can see you would never know that that ladder was up there so we're going to cover this part up with pavers and the wall stones and other things so Basically, that's to teach you how to grab brick from an image, or it could be siding, it could be anything, and use it to cover something else up. Now I want to remove this ladder that's in front of this post over here. We'll zoom in so you can see a little bit better. And to do that, I'm going to use the clone tool, but I'm also going to teach you another trick. So let's go into the clone tool here. We've got a good sized brush. I've set the brush up here by right clicking and I'll bring it down below it and I'll click and drag and you'll see that when I get down here in order to keep cloning I'm actually cloning over the railing and erasing it which is not what I want to do so let's do the other side here so you see that effect there it could be gotten around by getting smaller brushes zooming in doing some detailed work but I want to show you a trick so we'll cancel that what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this rail as an object and leave it right there so that I could just clone behind it. So I'll go up here to the Define Area tool. We'll grab this rail here. We'll click OK. Now to convert it to an object and make it stay where it is, we go to Area and we go to Convert to an Object. So now it's there. I didn't click and drag it to convert it. So now I'll go back into the Clone tool and again I'll right click to set my clone tool and bring it down here and as you can see I could draw past the railing and it doesn't erase it because it's an object floating above it and now we'll come from the bottom makes it much faster um, to do it this way okay let's zoom out see how that looks looks good enough we'll click OK and there's your trick